Hey guys, welcome back to the Mower Medic 1. Today we have a John Deere riding mower on the bench. It's an LA100. It's got the uh, manual transmission and manual engaging deck. Uh, the issue is the carburetor and I'm going to probably let you all know that probably 80% of the repairs that a small engine repair technician does is carburetor work or fuel system work. This gas we have today is not any good. So with that being said, I'm going to do a carb swap on this tractor, but the main reason for my video is that I want to show y'all how to rebuild these little Nikki uh, carburetors and how to do them correctly. My main objective today is to show you guys how to rebuild these uh, Nikki 6 carburetors. And uh, we're going to do that here in just a minute, but the carb swap was a success. Good idle, good wide open throttle. This one has a baffle broken loose inside the muffler, that's why it's rattling. Guys, welcome to the Nikki 6 carburetor. Notorious for stuck chokes and flooding its bum off for no apparent reason. Let's get into this thing and I'll show you how to fix them. One of the first things you want to do before you attempt to rebuild one of these carburetors is you just want to check the throttle shaft and make sure it doesn't have excessive play in there. Just wiggle her back and forth and up and down. This one seems to be okay. It's got a little bit of up and down, but uh, that's to be expected. Even a new carburetor has a little bit of play. Let's go ahead and unscrew the fuel solenoid. And have a look at it. And as you can tell, this one's actually stuck open. A little corrosion in there. I think we can clean it up and make it work. Let's go ahead and remove the screws on the bowl assembly. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt. I recommend using an, an impact screwdriver. kind of invert the carburetor and uh, remove the bowl. There, sometimes there's a, a heavy spring here on some of the early models, but this one there's not. Um, what we're going to do is remove the emulsion tube assembly. Just take and not try not to break it. Sometimes you'll have to replace this part and I'll show you why. This one's on there pretty good. Pulls off just like that. Go ahead and remove your float pin. And then remove your emulsion tube assembly and your float. And if you remember, and I'll put a link in the description, uh, the machine that this uh, carburetor came off of, it came off of a Craftsman 21 horsepower, and it was just absolutely flooding as fast as you poured gas in the tank. But we're going to take a look at this here. As you can tell, it's got some corrosion on the emulsion tube. Now this emulsion tube is, uh, part of the carburetor, don't try to take it out because you'll screw it up, damage it, whatnot. Let's just go ahead and pull the gasket off of here. And 
you'll throw that away because you're not going to use it. I like to take the float pin and get right up underneath this gasket here. And you can pop this one out. Using your float pin again, you can push out the main jet, hold it, kind of cup it in your hand and push it down. And then the main jet will come right out. Now, if your carburetor is flooding and you put a new needle in there and it still floods, you're going to have to replace this whole assembly right here. You can get it from Briggs. They have them aftermarket. They all work great. I've never had a problem with the aftermarket one. But what happens is, uh, even though you have a new needle, the seat down in here gets worn and it just does, does not seal anymore. It won't hold back the fuel. Go ahead and get you a pair of needle nose and pop the limiter cap off of the idle mixture screw. It'll just come right off. And let's go ahead and unscrew this and take it completely out. Let's go ahead and remove the choke shaft. Just pull the butterfly out and the choke shaft will come right after, just like that. Go ahead and slide the new O-ring and your new main jet. It comes with a kit. Slide your O-ring on the main jet and then we're gonna slide it into the uh, emulsion tube. I'm gonna put just a little bit of motion lotion on there just to help it slide in there without cutting the O-ring. Slide it in there and we're gonna, we are going to take a blunt object and push it home. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the carburetor body down in my ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, solution to that. Just enough to cover the carburetor. Purple power. I should have plenty of water in there already. That's good right there. We'll set it to 480 seconds and we'll see how she turns out. My, uh, my engine that I'm going to be putting this Nikki carburetor on does not have a uh, fuel solenoid, so I'm going to have to modify this one. Now the easiest way that I've found to install the choke shaft is just to put it down in there. And then you're going to wind the spring about one half turn. And remember that the indentions or cutouts in the butterfly are going to face outwards so that they mesh with the air holes. Go ahead and get your new emulsion tube assembly and we're just going to get it just a little bit wet. A little penetrating oil. And then slide your gasket on. Now here's the trick. You want this gasket to lay on the outside edge of this emulsion tube. You're not trying to seal right here where my pointer is 
you're sealing the outside of it whenever you mount the uh, float bowl. So just make sure your gasket is just pulled down over the edge all the way around the best you can. Now, let's get this carburetor and the emulsion tube assembly. Your fuel inlet is right here and the fuel inlet on the carburetor is right here. So you want to line those up. and push them together like that. Go ahead and slide your new needle in place. Just let it dangle there. Get your carburetor. Slide the needle in. And then slide your new float pin. Everything's looking good so far, so let's go ahead and put the bowl on. And cinch down those screws. Go ahead and install the idle mixture screw. Turn it in by hand until it stops. And two rounds out to get your initial setting. There's one, two. Lastly, let's install the fuel solenoid. Hey, let's try this uh, rebuilt carburetor on this old bricks here. Uh, it's my old test mule. As you can tell, I've got me an aftermarket filter minder in there. So far so good. Let's go, let's go ahead and get it tightened up here. Slide the air filter base back on. Start your nuts. You'll, as you can tell, this carburetor <clears throat> has a straight out nipple. And the old wall barrel had a 90, so I'll have to get me that. I'll uh, have to redo that just in, just so in case it wants to kink right there, but seems to be working fine for now. Got a good wide open throttle. Got good idle. Can you swap a Nikki for a wall barrel? Yes, you can. Guys, I hope this helps you out. Uh, give me a thumbs up if it did. And if you uh, hit that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it very much. And uh, while, while you're doing that, you might as well just click the bell so you get all my new videos. But uh, we got the Walbera off of the old test mule. I'm probably going to clean that Walbera carburetor just for the for grins and giggles. Uh, I want to mow the yard with this Nikki, see how it does. And uh, if I like it, I may leave it on there. If not, I'll put the old trusty wall barrel back on there. But anyway, guys, more Medic One. Y'all have a great night.